Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about domain and range specifically. So on the right there, I have a relation defined. It's just an example. And notice in the relationship, 1 maps to 2, negative 3 maps to 4, and uh, 5 maps to 6, and 2 maps to 1. And so domain are all the first values of the ordered pairs in a relation. And we sometimes refer to that as the x values. Range is all the second values of the ordered pairs. So my domain in this case, so domain, would be 1, negative 3, 5, and 2. And you could put those in order, probably be a good idea, from negative 3 up to 5. But that's our domain. You just list it. My range in this case, since these are discrete points, they're pr that's pretty easy. So my range in this case is 2, 4, 6, and 1. And again, probably be nice to organize that list and put it in order from least to greatest, but this is my domain and range. It gets a little more tricky when we switch to functions and other types of relations that deal with a rule or a graph. So here we have an ellipse. And uh, so the domain and range is going to change a little bit. Um, it's going to be a range of values that we'll have to show in like set notation or interval notation or as an inequality. But what's nice is what you do is if you notice this red line as it moves across, it's not tracing out any of the function yet. Oh, and there, as soon as I got to negative 6, a point D appeared. So that is where we actually have a domain and where the domain starts. So there's nothing over here to the left. The minute you touch that vertical line touches D, so my domain starts at negative 6. And then we have values all the way. You know, there'd be ordered pairs all the way to positive 6. This is not a function, by the way. And then as you go to the right, there are no more points. So my... So my domain, and I'm going to list it here and just draw right on here. So, and then we'll do range next. So my domain, if we listed this in interval notation, um, would be, or let's do set notation. So it's going to be the x values. And we started at negative 6, also included it. And we ended up at positive 6. And so there's the interval notation. Or, sorry, set notation. If you want interval notation, it'd be negative 6 with a hard bracket because we include it to positive 6 with another hard bracket. And so that's my domain in either set notation or interval notation. Okay, so now what about uh, the range? Well, the range basically is attached to the vertical axis, or the, yeah, the vertical axis. And so notice this line, there's no ranges, no points on the y-axis, or the second coordinate. Then suddenly, boom, b shows up at negative 2. And as you work up, you have points all along there in that green continuously until you get to 2. And then there are no points above 2. So my range is all these y values that start at 2 and go down to negative 2. So that's my range. And so let's list that in both the set notation and interval notation. So my range would be, now we're dealing with the y values, because it's the, the second number in the ordered pairs. And we started at negative 2. So we started at negative 2, and we went to positive 2. And so there's your range. Then your, then your domain, or we already did the domain, then your interval notation is we include the negative 2, and we go all the way to positive 2. And so that's the interval notation for that. Um, and when I do these, I don't care what the what my students listed in when they're talking about domain and range. They can either use set notation or interval notation as long as they put range in there so that I know which is which and can label it. I really like this one. Whoops. I like this one the best, the set notation the best. But 
the, the simplest one is this interval notation. So there we go. Let's try one more example. I lied. I got a couple more examples. But hit, this one's kind of a neat graph because it shows exactly what's happening. So as I drag this point, it traces out no points to the left. So I start here. It looks like at negative 6. And then notice it's tracing red for the range and pink for the domain. And so as you go across, then it ends here at 3. And then we have no points until I get to negative 2. Notice there's an open circle there. And again, the pink is the domain. The red is the range. And then we have another gap. And then it starts again at 2. And there's the rest of the function. And on out. And so that is my domain and range. So my domain's all the pinks. And my again, my range is all the reds. And what's kind of cool about this little geometry, uh, GeoGebra app is you hit the button and it does show you the answer. And so I'm going to write this a little bigger because that's kind of hard to see. So your domain is uh, the pink again. And so we started at negative 6. We went to negative 3 and we included both of those. Then we had a space, so we're going to union that with... Uh, from negative 2 to 1, but we don't notice we don't include the negative 2, so it's a soft bracket all the way to 1, and that is included because it's a solid circle. And then we have another gap, so we'll union that with the last part, which is 2 uh, all the way to 5. So there's your domain. I'll put D for domain. Range is the red stuff. I could do it in red, but uh, yeah, we can throw some red together here. And so my range, and usually you start at the bottom or work your way up, and notice it starts at negative 6 down here, right here. And it goes up to negative 2, but we don't include negative 2 because that's an open circle right there. It's hard to see it, but it is open. And then we have a gap, so we'll union that where we start here at 0. So right here, we'll start at 0, and we include 0. And then we go all the way to 4. And we also include 4. And so that's your domain and range in that particular, that particular graph. So that's kind of a complicated piecewise graph. So let's try one more. This may, eh, maybe not quite as hard. So I really like this particular one because what we have here is uh, this really complicated exponential function with a sine, you know, the square root of 4 sine x plus 0.02 is kind of cool. But you don't see this very often. But if you notice, we have these huge gaps here. So domain is in green and range is in blue this time. And it's tracing out my points. So notice it starts here um, at some value, probably negative 6.31, goes on up to negative, uh, looks like 4.75, comes back down. I'm not going to list this in set notation, but that's your green for your domain. And if you look at the range, it jumps up, right, to 4. Point, about 4, a little past 4. 4. Point, yeah, 4.75. No, no, it is 4. Never mind, I'm wrong. So it goes clear up to 4, and then it comes down to 1. So we could list the range here pretty simply. It's everything from 1 to 4. The domain's a little tougher because those come out as crazy decimals. But, uh, so if... And so that's all I'll do is just list the range on this one. But if you go across there, those, there's those gaps every time for domain. So your domain would be, you know, from here to here, then from here to here, then from here to here. And so you'd have to list all of those with a union. Now your range, the blue one, that one's really easy because it, it's periodic and it and it's the same every time. And so notice no graph starts until we get here to 1. And then it ends here at 4. 
and that's everywhere. So this is, um, your range is only from 1, which it looks like we include that, and it goes to 4, and we also include that. So there's your domain and range for that particular graph. And so I'll leave you with this one here. This will be the final one we do. Another one of those crazies, a simple uh, crazy piecewise functions. So it's, a, it's really close to the other ones. but So notice again, but it is different. Starts at negative 6. I'm talking about domain. Goes all the way to 3, negative 3. And then it skips down to negative 1. Goes to 3, doesn't include it. Jumps to 4, doesn't include that. Goes all the way to 5. And you can also see the values in the red are the range. So, so pause the video and see if you can write the domain and range for this thing. So I'll do my uh, domain in blue. So, so my domain, uh, we started at negative 6. We included it. We went to negative 3, also included that. Union, then we skipped to negative 1, we included that. Went all the way to this open circle here, which is at 3. That would be a soft bracket because it's not included. Then we skipped to 4, another soft bracket, again, is right there. And we went all the way to 5, which we included. So that's your domain. Your range, your range, if you start at the bottom, notice that negative 6 here, that's where it begins. And we include that negative 6. So negative 6, and then it goes to negative 2. We also include that. Even though it's an open circle here, this one, I covered it up, but that is a closed circle. So it goes to negative 2. And then it has another gap until we get to 0, which we would include. And we go all the way to, it looks like, 5. And also included there. So there's your domain and range for that one. And I hope this helps a little bit. It's probably a little different way of looking at things. And I will see you next time.